All right, everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Iman Shu, and we are continuing our journey of understanding and learning Salesforce development. We have reached a good chunk of 48, 49 videos, and in this video or from this video, we are in good shape to start understanding database interactions, right? Salesforce CRM is nothing without database. In fact, nothing is without data, right? Nothing, nothing really matters. Nothing makes sense without data. So database interactions are the core or the integral part of how we handle customer uh, relationship management, be it creating data, be it storing data, be it archiving data, be it modifying data, be it migrating data, be it playing around with data, it all revolves around data, right? So we know that the database resides somewhere in Oracle and that's the database we'll be interacting with by writing queries, by inserting items, by creating records, by deleting records, by modifying them. So we'll understand that bit of it within Apex, right? So for people who have, you know, who have come from, from a background of let's say C, C Sharp or C++ or Java, they know that, you know, uh, there's a layer between the database and, 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 the Apex and the server side programming that they write, right? However, in Salesforce with the proprietary language that's Apex, which, which we are learning right now, you can easily and readily talk to your database within your server code and that's how easy it is right which is why it makes it very easy to interact with the database and that's exactly what we are going to learn in the next couple of videos all right awesome all right so database operations are pretty much you know create read update delete right crud that's all that's that's what you hear from everyone right what are the crud permissions have, have you given the crud permissions to the profile so inserting a record modifying a record or updating a record or deleting a record that's all you can do just think of the entire database what can you do you can either insert it you can either modify it or you can delete it right and you can read it basically so reading will keep separate that's wherein queries come come into the picture but right now we'll focus on these three primary operations okay now understand this you are living in an apartment that is about let's say 100 apartments in the total society and everyone gets access to electricity, water, and some common utilities, right? Can you block the entire water supply for your own apartment? No. Because it is a multi-tenant ecosystem, there would be a allotted slot for your apartment, right? Or let's say it could be the gym. You cannot block it for yourself and your fa family for the entire 24 hours for the 365 days. No, cannot be done right and that's the same concept that applies here there are governor limits when it comes to accessing resources be it making database operations be it, be it writing queries be it writing any kind of apex programming there will always be governor limits because we are in a multi-tenant cloud architecture system right so just keep relating yourself to that apartment example everywhere you will always ensure that you only use resources that are sufficient and allocated for you and you don't hit any kind of limits that come into picture when it comes to Salesforce. All right. So what can we do as part of database operations? We can insert records, we can update or modify records and we can delete records. So how do we do it on Apex? We'll quickly see. And these are the three database operations that we'll target for now. All right. There are two ways of doing these database operations. We'll start with the first one that is writing data manipulation language operations or statements, which is insert, update and delete. All right. Let's quickly create a new Apex class and I'll say understanding database operations. Also, a quick note, I've just modified or basically I'm just changing my audio quality. Basically, I've just taken up another uh, another um, audio tool that I have, I mean like another USB condenser microphone. If this audio is better than the previous videos and you find this better, like in terms of let's say noise cancellation, in terms of the speed, in terms of the loudness, um, some people have been complaining in some past videos. So I just wanted to check with you guys. Let me know if this is an, a better audio. I'll continue with this or else I'll go back to the previous audio. All right. I mean the previous uh, uh, microphone I was using. So let me know in the comments. Perfect. So our Apex class is created. I'll quickly create a method public static void handle account inserts, right? That's the name of my method. I'll quickly save it. All good so far. So 
The line that says here is DML operations can be performed on single S object as well as multiple records of an S object together. What does that mean? We already know what is an S object, account, contact, opportunity, all of these are S objects. These are objects, right? So can you insert or basically can you update or can you delete a single account record? Yes. Can you do it for let's say five or 10 of them together? Yes, even that is possible. Okay, but and it is always ideal to execute bulk DML operations. What is bulk? We'll understand that very soon. Okay, so it's always better to insert five records together than to insert them one by one so that you don't hit any kind of governor limits. Okay, what are governor limits? We'll cover that later. Don't worry for now. Awesome. So for database operations, you have these three keywords. See, insert, update, delete. See how they turn purple? That means there are keywords. Correct. So if I say insert account record, if this is an instance of the account record, it will get inserted into the database. If I say insert contact list, it will get update. I mean, it will be updated. If I say delete opportunities, it will delete the opportunities. Right now, what is this account record variable? First of all, right? Let's quickly try to comment this out and let's backtrack it so what would be account record it would it would be an instance of the account object so i'll say account acc record equals new account and as soon as i instantiate it this error will go away from line 5 and it will be able to insert it i'll just quickly try to save it saved all looks fine right so if you want to insert a record you instantiated the record and then you pass in the mandatory parameters you will always have to ensure that you have the mandatory parameters that are required for that record to be created in the system right for those of you who are familiar with salesforce admin when you create a new account record you have to enter some fields right mandatory fields name is mandatory right so you have to ensure that you provide that field value so how do we access the keys we use the dot operator and as soon as you do dot on the developer console this beautiful option comes wherein you can choose the keys right so i'll say account dot name equals salesforce makes sense and i'll say save so i have only done one field mapping the name field correct let me go ahead and try inserting this account record into the system so i'll just go ahead and say anonymous execute get rid of all of the statements i'll say understanding database operations dot handle account inserts and i'll hit it i'll say execute Okay, so it ran fine and it created a log of 4.32 KB. If I take a look at this particular log and I scroll down, you'll notice that the number of DML statements you have used is one out of 150. Correct? What does that mean? That means you have used the insert keyword here, right? What has that done? That has created an account record in your system. Let's quickly take a look. If I go home and if I go to let's say of accounts let's open the accounts tab here you will see that a new record salesforce makes sense is an account that's just created see it has it has been created on 30th june 1136 which is like the uh, ist time i'm on the gst time zone right now perfect so you see this was mandatory and if i click edit here you see this red flag coming up here see this is a mandatory field you see this uh, what do you call it this red line it says that it is mandatory if i remove it and i try to save it it will say please enter please review all error messages you must enter a value and that's what's needed that's what that's all that's needed to create an account record the name of the account the name of the company that's it right but let's let's come back to our debug log and you see how we are able to see that there's a limit usage log that tells you that the number of DML statements you have used is one out of 150. Why one? Because you made one insert statement. Okay. If I again go ahead and say account record two, and I say this is first company, and I say this is my second company. All right, second company. So I'm trying to insert two account records i'll say save get rid of this log i'll say execute once this is saved let's go ahead and say execute oh my bad this should be account record two this one right this should be account record two so it failed i'll just say save 
and I'll execute again and I'll say execute so both the lines have executed and if I take a look at this particular log right here and I take a look at the limit usage section it says you have used 2 out of 150 number of DML statements are 2 why there are two insert statements so every time you use insert update delete that counts as one DML statement and if you notice the log what is the maximum limit that you have what is the maximum cap you can only do 150 DML statements in one transaction and that's your governor limit okay so you must be thinking so Imanshu how do I insert 160 accounts I have 160 companies that I I cater to that's my business so how do I insert all of them together so you have to insert all of them together not one by one the way I'm doing it right now and that's what's basically the idea of bulkification right instead of writing two insert account record what I can do I can simply create a list of accounts we know how to use collections and I'll say account list equals a new list of account and I'll say instead of using the insert statement here I'll get rid of the insert statement on each s object I'll say account record dot name equal to first company one account record two equals second company one and then I'll simply say account list dot add account record account list dot add account record two so what I'm trying to do I'm trying to consolidate or collate all of these account records that I've created into a single list let's first of all try to save it and see if all of this looks fine right looks fine and now what I'll do I have a list of accounts and I'll simply say insert account list so instead of inserting each account record one by one I'm inserting a list of accounts and that is what will take away the the count and it will only say that you have only use the insert statement once right if I go ahead and say hit and I say execute the previous log told us that we used two out of 150 DML statements why there were two insert statements one for each account we are essentially inserting two accounts again however because we have used a list right now you'll see that the number of DML statements used is for is one basically one only for the list if I scroll down here you'll notice this only one out of 150 make sense so your 160 account records how do you insert them you bulkify them you put them inside a list and then you insert them don't do it one by one by using insert statement each time that will take away your governor limits and it will hamper your system make sense awesome so there is a quick start to understanding database operations and we'll take a deep dive into the next video so now before we jump into the other database operations update and delete insertion does not require any kind of queries from the system why because you are inserting a new record correct however when you want to update or modify a record that already exists in the database you need to actually fetch it right and how do you fetch it by querying it from the database and that's where salesforce object query language socle and salesforce object search language socle come into the picture okay so before jumping into the rest of the database operations i'd encourage you to take a look at and understand Sokal and Sossel by the next videos right what I've done here is let me quickly take a look at my navigator here what I've done here is I have a separate tutorial on Sockle, right which has all of this information with very good use cases that will make you a zero to hero on Sockle, which is your Salesforce query language and then I have something similar on Sossel right that is your search language right so the ex entire explainer is on these two videos what I've done is I've just collated them together and I've put a video right after this video okay so I'll encourage you to take a look at Sockle, Sossel and then we'll come back here and understand how to use update operations delete operations write those DML statements and then proceed with the other items on the database side of the world okay great that's all from this particular video I'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.